found myself inside a pod. Just out the front of the pub. Gonna get a pint and some dinner here tonight and then just camp in the woods just up the road there. And if that fails, back up the road. And there's a nice section of woods up there. Heater is on, it's boiling in there. Just got a fresh pint. Dad's gone to order the food. Life is good. That's another 16 miles ticked off today. Pretty good effort. A lot of it was on Shingle Beach as well, so it was hard going underfoot. But we made it. Had some real nice weather and some good views today. It's been boss. It's been awesome spending some time with my dad as well. An original Banksy, luxury rentals only. Nice converted barn. Got a really nice stretch at the top of these cliffs now. I'm on the cliffs between Side Strand and Trinningham. And I'm trying to get to Munsley by this evening. I've probably got another five, six K to go today. My dad's got a taxi back to his car in Wells next to sea. He left me at Cromer after having a nice breakfast this morning. That was a really nice pub meal we had last night as well. Getting spoiled on this trip. Not surviving, absolutely thriving. <laughs> and when we left the pub, we only walked about 200 metres up the road, cutting on the left into a nice little wood with a big chalk backed wall at the edge. I actually woke up a bit sweaty in the night. I had to take all my warm kit off, just set up an A-frame tarp, both hunkered down under there. But the temperature today is absolutely lovely. Quite still as well. You can see my greasy hair. There's not much wind, if any. There's the Coast Guard helicopter. My dad said to me earlier, I'm glad to see you're still not wearing gaiters. The hint's in the name. Monk Jack. Pheasant. I don't even know if you can see them, can you? Probably not, that's the trouble with this wide angle lens. Anything in depth and you're kind of screwed. It is Remembrance Sunday today. When we walked through Cromer, we stopped at the Cenotaph and did our two minute silence, paid our respects. Look at the color of that sky. Epic sunset on one side and a nice pink blue sky with the sea on the other. I've just realised as well, we're past the halfway mark. I'm pretty buzzing with that, finish off day six at about 105 miles. Right, I think I'm going to stop for the night just as the sun's going down. Found a nice little nook on the top of the cliffs behind me. So I'm just going to lay my bivy bag and my mat out there. I kind of wanted to get down on the beach today. It'd be like another mile and a half, two miles before I can properly get back down onto the beach without scrambling down. I don't want to be doing that. So we're going to settle for the cliffs. It's not that windy, so we'll take this spot. I'm just ogling over that sunset. Honestly, I can't get enough of that. <laughs> Life ain't bad, is it? There's my bed set up. No tarp tonight. Just got my bag next to me, right on the cliff edge. There's quite a lot of dew, but there's no wind.
that. Best sunrise we've had this trip. Morning. What a beautiful sunrise this morning, eh? Slept well on the cliff last night, although it was a little dewy this morning, which I did kind of expect. It didn't rain though, and it wasn't too windy in the night. It's been absolutely gorgeous this morning. It's just gone eight o'clock. I've only done about two miles this morning, taking it slow, but yeah, it was lovely. Epic sunset last night and an even better sunrise this morning. Feeling good again today. Feel good to go. I'm on my way to Sea Palin, which is where I'm gonna stop for some food and that, and then I'm gonna push on further than that. I stayed just past Munsley last night. I'm walking straight into that sun and the glow along the beach and the waves is just, ah. Let's put some miles in. If anyone out there's got Facebook, which I don't, and fancy doing me a favor, please share this video around as much as possible to really try and push the pot higher on the charity money raised. That'd be really awesome and uh, yeah, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. These multi-day trips like this and the last charity hike and the Wales trip and going up the peaks and trips like that, they really, really do it for me. Just out completely winging it without too much of a plan. Obviously I've got somewhere to be, but just have the freedom of not knowing where I'm camping, just laying my bed wherever I want to pitch up, not knowing really where I'm going, everything's new en route. It's awesome, I absolutely love it. It's just complete freedom as I say. I feel completely at peace out here doing stuff like this, it's wicked. This is a good idea, two minute beach clean. They've left you the litter picker and a sack. And that's a pretty good idea, isn't it? Oh, if this was here last night, I defo would have stayed in there. This coastline's littered with sea defences. Because it was so wet this morning, I packed my kit in a bit of a rush, just so I could get going. And I didn't pack it very well, because my titanium mug is digging into my kidney. So I'm gonna have a bit of a reshuffle quick while we've got the hard stand in. There's the culprit. Been packing my sleeping bag first. Then I put my slippers together, lay them flat. Just because it's stuff that I won't use till the end of the day. And then I put my warm kit on top of that. And then my spare pants and socks just fit next to it. Cook kit. Warm jacket and gloves. There's been times where I've stopped for maybe half an hour and I've just wanted my jacket, so I keep my jacket outside my dry bag now, just in case I want to chuck it on during the day. Nestle the mug in there, and stop it rattling around with my rain jacket on top. And in my top flap, I've got a first aid kit, torch, compass, and then all my food underneath that. In the outside side pockets, I've just got my electronics, SD cards, camera batteries, phone charger, and my knife in that one. In this side pocket, I just keep my foot care kit, my toothbrush, toothpaste, wipes, and all that sort of stuff in there. And then in the bottom section, which is separate from the top, but you can slip a couple of things up the side, I've got my tarp, my roll mat, my cordage, my pegs, my pillow, and then the rain cover in the very bottom. And then in this little front compartment, I've been keeping my drinks from Y Food that are keeping me going, snack bars, a few nuts. In the side I just keep my DD hiking poles and then I stack two water bottles, one on top of each other. And the cool thing about this Osprey bag is they've left this open so you can reach in and grab a bottle and pull it out while you're on the move. Everything's been really thought about with this bag and I'm absolutely loving it. It's my new favourite bit of kit. There's a tractor spreading liquid manure and the wind is blowing right in my direction. <laughs> Oh, it absolutely hums. Big shout out to Hazel and Pete at the Reef Bar in Sea Pauline for squaring me away a free dinner and a beer. Thank you very much. Big love.
Made it to Winterton Dunes, just got to walk behind these for a few K. And then we get to the shop and then find somewhere to camp for the night. And there's more seals. Them two are off into the sealer. I reckon there's about 700 seals in the colony. I've walked about 3k and they've scattered the beach the whole way along. Another good sunset tonight. Good morning, day seven. I turned the camera off last night. Once I had a beer in the pub, I just made my way down to the beach on Winterton and I just slept in my bivvy bag on the sand down there. I pushed on through Hemsby, Scrapby, Caster, and I'm now sat on a bench in Great Yarmouth and I lost my nose stud three days ago, so I'm gonna go to Claire's Accessories and buy some nose studs. I tried to wash my hair in a public toilet this morning. I've been trying to save my camera batteries as well, so I just left the camera off till now, just pushed on this morning. It's just gone half 11. I'm gonna nip into the shop. I might get some lunch somewhere and then crack on. I'm gonna finish this by the end of the day. I've got to be in Hopton on Sea, and then it's the start of the Suffolk Coast Path tomorrow, which starts at Lowestoft. I just want to say to all you Norwich fans, <laughs> Middlesbrough, UTFB. of the Norfolk Coast Path at the end of day eight. And basically underneath what you could call Lowestoft's Pier, but it's not really a pier because it's more like a uh, restaurant on stilts. The wind is ripping through, safe from the rain, and I'll take that. I'm gonna get my bed roll out, blow my mat up, get myself some sleep. I've already done, what, five, 600 meters of the Suffolk Coast Path, just because I was trying to find a spot from earlier. But either way, I'm gonna take this and I'm happy. So I'll see you in the morning. Morning! You join me on day eight, or day one, of the Suffolk Coast Path. Day eight of my total trip, day one of the Suffolk Coast Path. Pretty windy in the night, but I was out of the rain. I was woken up this morning by three police officers shining torches at me, but not for me. I'm all packed up now, good to go. Half six, quarter to seven, and we are heading that way. So let's go. 30 grand each, these new beach huts. Or sheds. <laughs> Two stories of them. See a big sign back there. 30 Gs, man. It's a little bit chilly on the old pause this morning. Fresh one. A little breezy. That's nice. Oh, the roots right on a Mackey's, the torment. I'm not going to though. Jizzle ham. Well, already I can say that the Norfolk Coast Path was way better marked than the Suffolk Coast Path. I am only just coming out of Lowestoft really, but there's not been a lot of signs compared. Suffolk colours for the signage on this one. No acorns anymore. Back in the motherland then, and back in Suffolk. I'm just walking down the side of a farm field on this footpath. I can see the sea over to my left. The Norfolk coast path was absolutely beautiful. I know a lot of the coastline, and I know a lot of the Suffolk coastline, so I'm hoping this one throws up some surprises as well, some things that I haven't seen. Because you can only access so much by car, can't you? And uh, it really opens up another perspective when you go everywhere on foot, and you see so much more. So yeah, I'm excited, I'm feeling good. I've still got like another nine days off work or 10 days off work or something, so I'm in no rush, but I reckon I'll do it in the four, maybe even three, depending on how much I can be bothered to walk each day. Really taking it all in and enjoying it. Regular signage has definitely improved since we left Lowestoft.
five miles cracked out before half eight. I'm just stopping for five minutes. Just enjoying the sun coming through the clouds. It looks like it's raining out to sea there and the clouds are coming this way. So it might be time to put the rain jacket on soon. Right, well I'm sorry I haven't filmed much today. It's been absolutely smashing it down with rain for about five hours, but I've completed 17 miles and I've made it to Southwold. I've just been for a beer in the Red Lion pub, which is a favorite that me and Catherine like to go to. We love Southwold. This is where we go when we go to the beach. The locals have just told me about a little shelter that I'm gonna go check out and then I'll probably end up spending the night in there. What a day today has been. Finally, I'm out of the wind, out of the rain. I've just got all my warm kit on, just powdered my feet, I'm all squared away. The wind is ruthless tonight. So I'm just near the beach in Southwold. I'll show you a little better in the morning. But I've just been constantly rained on today. I've barely even got the camera out, apologies for that. But the camera's not waterproof and I've pretty much just had my head down cracking the miles out today. So I've completed 17 miles from Lowestoft to Southwold. As I say, I'll show you the camp a little bit better in the morning, but I am so glad to be in camp now. I'm so glad to be toasty and warm and dry. I'm knackered now, so I'm going to catch you in the morning. Good morning, day 10. And I cannot remember the last time I was camping and it was as windy as it was last night. My flipping heck. I woke up in the middle of the night to the tarp flapping around. Two of the pegs had come out, so I had to double up with a few sticks. I ended up pegging every ribbon down, and the wind was ripping through here. It was an absolute nightmare. I can't see me doing too much filming again today, because this is going to be pretty much day three of being soaking wet. I've just packed most of my kit up. I'm just sitting on my rain jacket now, but all my bed stuff's packed away, all my warm kit's packed away, apart from the rab jacket. Wet and dry drills. I've put my wet trousers and stuff back on, but I have got fresh socks. Got a wet t-shirt on though. Probably gonna sit under here for another half hour or so. I'm gonna see what this rain's doing. I don't know what time it is because my phone's run out of battery and my power bank's run out of battery. So I need to find somewhere today that I can charge my phone, like a pub or a cafe or something like that, because I've got no cash. I've been paying through things on my phone. So yeah, kind of a bit screwed. So I need to get walking and just get wet again, basically. And I think I actually ended up in a caravan site. Obviously there's no caravans here because we're getting into winter now. You can see there's some houses there, the railings and the road is just there. So I just hopped the fence, pitched the tarp there. Got my poles propping up the tarp as well. That helped with the wind last night. I've just made it to Dunwich. This place is closed behind me, but I think there's a pub down there. If you see where that blue car is in between the posts, just above there, as far as you can see, that's Walberswick. So I had to leave Southwold, walk half a kilometre up the river, cross the footbridge, half a kilometre back, and then down the coastline through Walberswick, here to Dunwich. Here you are, the last grave. The last surviving gravestone from the church, which was 40 metres that way, out to sea. And some of the bones come out from the eroding cliff face now and again. Nice little bit of woodland right at the top of the cliffs. Pretty cool. I was only down here maybe a month ago with Catherine out on a walk. <laughs> Sometimes I keep looking back on myself at fence posts because I'm doing the Suffolk coast path the reverse way around. So a lot of the times I think there's no signage and then I turn around and it's on the fence post going the other way. It's been funny because there's been certain days where I felt better or stronger than others. Today's one of them days where I'm feeling real strong and I feel like I can just go on forever. Yesterday my feet started to really cane by the end of the day and it's just through the impact. It's not hot spots or blisters or anything, it's just through doing that mileage with kit on every day. It starts to take its toll on the feet but they are in good shape and I am feeling good. I've got what, two more days left. I've had this seal skin hat about 12 years. It's one of my favourite bits of kit and it's coming an absolute treat on this trip. 
Also, because I have no idea what time it is, I just went to the pub in Dunwich and it opens at half 12 till 2 before the evening and it was shut, so it can't even be half 12 yet. But we are pushing on, walking down a real nice driveway at the minute. Look at all these sycamores. It's been nice to feel the weight of my kit go down slowly, more and more every day, because it's the uh, cause it's the boil in the bag meals that take up most of my weight. I had one resupply from Catherine last Friday, um, but other than that, I've been carrying four litres of water and then I've had all my meals with me. So I work my way through them, they are nice in the evening. I could save a little bit of weight with the freeze dried ones where you just add the hot water to it but I don't think they're ever as good. I like the meals that you just heat up and they're all good to go. That being said I prefer to normally just cook fresh but not when I'm out on a trail with mileage to cover. It's definitely noticeable when all your kit's dry packed in there and when all your kit's wet Definitely adds a pound or two on, that's for sure. Walking out into the heathland now, exposed to the rain again. It's just mizzling on at the minute. You just want to be doing this on a motorbike, really, don't you? Razzing it down here. And that is what you call the house in the clouds here in Thornton there, it's in the village badge as well. Pretty cool. There's a big old windmill. Back on the shingle. Well I've just pushed on through Thorpe Ness. I stopped for a quick coffee and then I tried to charge my phone for a little bit. After about five minutes my cable decided it wasn't going to work anymore so I'm stuck with pretty much zero battery. I've just pushed on almost to Oldborough and I found this epic little statue on the beach. I almost want to camp under it because it's got a shelter. Look, I'll show you. I'm not sure where the sea comes to, but let's have a quick look inside anyway. Oh, oh look at it in here. You've got a backrest. And you've got a view. I'm really not sure about this waterline. I don't think it's going to be worth the risk. There's going to be plenty of people that know about this statue. Like, oh, just camp there, just camp there. The water never goes near there. Or people are going to be sat there like, yeah, don't camp under there, mate. <laughs> it is a little bit of a wind tunnel as well, to be honest. I definitely like to camp here in the summer. Hear those voices that will not be drowned. I remember coming here for a school trip when I was in like year 10 to do geography and we learned about longshore drifts and all the types of sea defences. Come on, Oprah! <laughs> Look at that for a cool little pub, the Cross Keys. Local pub, it's an Adnams back in Southwold, lovely beer. Ghost Ship, Southwell Bitter, Broadside. Yeah, they do some nice ones. Here we are then, digs for tonight. I ended up coming back to this little white shelter that we saw earlier. But I went and got myself a new charging cable. And I wouldn't normally be too bothered. If I was on my own and no one really knew what I was doing, I wouldn't be bothered about charging my phone. It's actually been quite nice to have no phone for a day or so. Um, but I've told certain people I check in with them and I told people I keep them updated on my progress and stuff so I kind of had to go get a charging cable and get my phone squared away. Um, plus with the dodgy signage on here, I've got my map as well which I've been using but my go-to has been the Hiker app. It's H-I-I-K-E-R. I'm not affiliated with them at all but their route mapping has been spot on. Anyway, I'm going to cook up some food in a minute and then probably get an early night. And from the digs town is literally just over there. I should probably turn my head torch off because there's people dining over there. <laughs> so yeah, the road is very close and there are cars right there. But I think there's no reason anyone should be coming onto the beach tonight, especially to come around to the shelter on this side. So I think we should be all right. What we got tonight, meatballs with basmati and tomato sauce by Adventure Menu. Real food to go. Let's go then. Oh, she's bubbling. 
seven. Once the water's boiled, you want to leave it simmering for like another five minutes just to really heat it through. Oh, it's a nice hand warmer that is. Oh, I almost don't want to eat it. The old sideways slice. Two more days left, eh? And then we're done. What a journey this has been. We've seen some epic sights. We've had some epic weather, good and bad. That first day when my dad was here, I know I didn't really film much because I was kind of hanging out with him. But um, that was like a September day, that was glorious. It was like 24, 25 or something. Contact Coffee Co pulling through with the strength 5 out of 5 bags and there's a bin just behind here so it's been easy this camp really easy slept awesome last night didn't wake up at all just woke up this morning when the sun kind of started trying to come out a little bit and then it quickly got sucked up by the clouds I really lacked motivation yesterday morning when the rain was coming down on the tarp and I was just still in my warm kit and I didn't want to put my wet kit back on and go straight into a face full of wind and rain. So it took me a while to get going yesterday. But this morning, straight up, cracked on my things, got packed away. Shout out to community camps legend, Johnny Tempeg. Because he brought me a RAB t-shirt. What an absolute dude. Do you know what? For every Rusty Sheriff's badge out there, there's someone with a kind, kind heart. Johnny Tempeg and a lot of people that have sent me parcels, just sent me bits just to be kind. Just like, there's some really, really kind people in this world that are just kind for no reason. They're just kind people. It's not why I do this. Obviously, I say it time and time again, but it is appreciated. And I'll keep saying it because I keep wanting you to know. Because <laughs> I've got the best subscribers out there, honestly. You're all amazing. Look at the community we've created through this channel, through the community camps, through people connecting online and going off camping in their groups. I've said it before and I'll say it again because it's awesome. I love seeing the little sub-communities like spur off. The misfits together. You're right, you can't tell anyone I told you this because I've broken every rule in the book this morning. Not only have I left my RAB jacket on, I've left my merino wool base layer on as well. I just couldn't be bothered to put my wet t-shirt back on, so I'm staying warm and dry for a little bit longer. Beware of golf balls, it says. I think it might be a little too early for golfing, but... <laughs> Imagine just take them onto the Swede when you're out on a little walk. You sick of the sight of water yet? <laughs> I'm not, I'm just asking you, because I filmed a fair bit of it. Has anyone heard of the folklore story of Black Shuck? If not, Google it, I'll put a picture up now. But it's an old folklore story of a black dog that roams the East Anglian coastline and countryside. So I've been keeping my eyes out for him. I haven't seen him yet though, but who knows, still got two more nights. Oh yeah, and he's not actually a dog, he's a ghostly black dog. I know people like to read through the comments, and I've been a bit slack with the history of all the towns and villages that I've passed through on this trip. I guess I've kind of just had my head in the game, in my own world, just uh, enjoying the scenes and not really... <laughs> I haven't done any research and I've not really been thinking about the history. So, if anyone wants to leave some history about any of the villages or towns that I've walked through, if you're from there or anything, for others to read, then you can help me out. It's a nice little bit, isn't it? Older. You can tell here, look. 
old as a softwood and it's porous it used to be made for uh, making boats and stuff because it's quite durable in water if it's kept wet but I think they use it in plywood now you can hear the jays way over on the left is the river old and I'm currently heading towards Snape and this has probably been my favourite bit of the Suffolk coast path so far these estate grounds are lovely so many different trees, it's in loads of mushrooms all the autumn colours it's been real nice yes I have been wearing the same pair of trousers for 10 days now well 11 days now However, I'm not really too fussed about the trousers. As long as I've got pants and socks and foot powder stuff, I'm good to go. Always keep a dry set of kit, he says, until he broke the rule this morning. If it rains now, I don't have a dry t-shirt, but there you go. Snape marshes. I haven't seen any yet, but apparently there's otters out there. Old smuggler's route then. Is it a red stag? No, it's just a tree. Hi right, geezer. Oh no, don't like that, eh? Oh, he's coming. Hello there. What are you snaffling on there, mate? He's the bravest one. All the others just ran away. Well, you have a good one. Look at the quality of the grass. You could play football on there. Kind of feels like I'm back in Thetty at the minute with the straight rows of pine. I don't mean to go all hippie on you or anything, but I've noticed recently all your pent up frustration and angers and all that with the world and everyday life, you have to channel it into doing the things you love, which is why I'm always more than up for doing this sort of thing. And it's why I love camping so much and just being outdoors because I just channel all my frustration into a positive. And I've only recently just learned that, I guess, but there you go, hippie speech of the day. It's a conscious effort as well, getting up off your backside and actually getting out and doing stuff. It's too easy to slip into that trap of just sitting there, binging YouTube and not really doing a lot, eating crap food and whatever. But you need to really be conscious about getting up and getting out there and doing something fun, doing something productive, do something that you enjoy. But you really have to put some effort into it. It's not just going to happen, you need to make it happen. So go make it happen. Well, we've done 11 miles this morning, so I'm going to stop in this pub up here in Froy's. <laughs> right, I better just make a quick call. Whoa, what's that? It's a library. Oh, nice one. Right, everyone be quiet for a bit, because this is a quiet lane. I'm liking what you did there at Butley Sluice number one. Sorry, Butley Mill Sluice number one. This looks like a nice gaff. Been so many nice gaffs on this trip, haven't there? You wouldn't be from Suffolk if you didn't appreciate a good old vintage tractor. Fact. What's up, gang? Taters? What's taters? You know, boil and mash them, stick them in a stew. The Oyster Inn in Butley. Okay, so I've just pushed off the footpath, maybe about 100 metres, into this mixed woodland. Looks like there's two parts. There is a game section over there, which is all fenced off. 
and there is a farm down the way, but this looks like it's going to be the best spot in the area and I don't really want to walk too much further today, so I think I'm going to stick with here and then I'm going to set my tarp up off this beech tree here and let's get squared away. It's a good little method for powdering your feet, this. You get it right in between your toes, there's no mess. Oh, I love this part of the day. Get the feet squared away, all the warm kit on. It's time to chill. There are so many animals in this woods. I had my head torch off just then and something got really close up to me and then I moved a bit and I heard it scuttle away. Steak Detective beef chilli tonight. I'm looking forward to this one. Looks like we're getting soaked on the final day. We've woke up, good mood, good to go. Let's get on the trail. Watch out for snakes, especially on Instagram. Perfect tent camping spot up on that ledge there. You're out the wind, no roof obviously, but not a bad little spot. I think I'm gonna have to put the camera away. The rain's just started coming down now. So I'm just coming into Bordsy now. I've spent the last three, three and a half hours walking down the salt marsh. It's kind of like out, along, back, along, out, along, back. So it's a lot of distance, but you're not really covering a lot of distance, if you know what I mean. There's some old World War II sea defences over there. I've been in there once before. I think I've seen someone do a camping video in there. And uh, I'm probably just going to make myself a coffee, have a quick half hour. Luckily it's stopped raining now, but as you can see, I'm absolutely drenched. So yeah, I'm just going to warm up a little bit, get a hot brew in me and then we'll push on. We can have some posh baked beans as well. Got to add the water to these ones. Back on the move, we finally got some sunshine. Do you know, I'm not even too bothered about being on the roads right now. I'm actually quite happy to get off the salt marshes. When I've not been filming, I've been making my own lyrics up to other people's tunes. Do you ever do that? But I can't sing any on here because they're probably all a bit rude. Traditional British post box for any of you Americans watching. Absolute classic. This is the standalone version. You get the big round pillared ones in towns and cities. Some villagers have them. Nah, sorry mate, I can't serve you. I think you've had enough, pal. I've got my fleece on now as well, which has been in my kit since Friday when I saw Catherine for the resupply. I've probably only got about five miles left and I can almost taste the fish and chips that I'm going to get at Felixstowe. What a nice last day for it. Sun's come out, shining bright. Just come into Bordsy Quay and I've got to jump on a ferry to get across the River Deben. But I'm not even sure if it's running on a Sunday. I don't know the time, so it could be sat around for a little bit or we could be straight on. I'm not too sure. Well presented standalone, solid. <laughs> of course the ferries are seasonal and there isn't going to be any until like spring so <laughs> it's like a 27 mile round trip just to cross 100 meters and I'm going to have to get a taxi. Hey. I think there's a cafe back that way. So I just went and had a cheese scone and a coffee in the Boathouse Cafe, quite nice in there. Now I'm waiting for a taxi which is going to take me to Woodbridge and then I'm going to get the train from Woodbridge to Felixstowe, walk back and then finish the walk. So it's an extra 27 miles just across that 100 metres. When I even looked into this walk I didn't even realise there was a ferry crossing on it, to be honest. So yeah, my bad. This is what we're talking about. Freestanding pillar letterbox. Go on, lad. 
Right, so a taxi and two trains later, we've made it to Felixstowe. I'm now walking two and a half miles to get back to the other side of the river, the River Deben, to where I would have got off the ferry, and then we'll walk down the coastline into the finish. Oh, great example of bus stop that isn't a bus stop. I'm ready to get home, have a shower, chill on the sofa, and it makes you appreciate everything a little bit more as well, I think. Hashtag bus stop that isn't a bus stop. Primo variety. Nice styling on this one, look. Don't rate the bench so highly, though. On one hand, it feels like I only started this journey yesterday, but then on the other hand, it feels like I've been walking forever. A nice Merc parked outside a boarded up house. Hmm. There's the port behind me. The busiest container port in the whole of the UK. I think 48% of containers go through that port right there. The place is colossal. And I'm a couple of hundred meters from the finish. Come on! We're finished. 200 miles out of 200 miles, completed it. And I'm absolutely buzzing. Come on, that was a sick 12 days. What a trip. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, hopefully I got some good highlights in there. I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider hitting the subscribe button if you did enjoy the video. That would massively help me out. And uh, if you haven't donated, please do consider it. It's for a great cause, Veterans at Ease. The Just Giving link's down below. Thank you so much. Um, I shall see you on the next one. Ciao. Let's get fish and chips. <laughs> I got caught up playing on the 2P machines in the arcade and then I realised there's about a five minute window between me catching and missing this train. So I've had to get a shift on.